Let's bring in our analyst, Evan Wash, for now to kind of react to the just how the college season just ended like that. And none of us were ready for it. The players, coaches, obviously weren't ready for it. it Evan, when the news came down over this past week, just what was your reaction? And, and how do you try to absorb this thing just going away? I'll be honest with you, Travis. It's, it's still taking me some time. And obviously, for me, specifically, you kind of wrap in the college basketball stuff that's usually part of my plate at this time of the year. But really gearing up for the college across season and the irony coincidence never get those two right it seems like it, the weather's turning here in baltimore we've had some really sunny days it smelled like lacrosse season and uh it's been it's been really challenging to think about not making that turn uh as i do each year uh towards college across and getting in the booth with whether it be Dave Ryan or Ben Holden making the short trip to Loyola to do a bunch of their games and covering the Big East and, and really where my now attention goes and sympathy and thoughts, it's, it's with the, the players. And I'll be honest, a lot of the coaches, just because those are the people I know better. I mean, I've got best friends at Georgetown and Kip Turner, UVA, guys that I grew up with. And I just know the amount of work they put in for this, whatever you want to call it, three, four month stretch. And for that to just go away, um, it has to be uh, really tough. So that, that's really where my mind has been, let's call it the last five to seven days. And, and obviously it was the right decision we're seeing across the country, things shutting down. Obviously it hopefully will help the, the situation and help us get back to normal at some point. But I, I think for me, my heart goes out to all the seniors. I was messaging with some of the guys for Penn State, and they're on the bus on their way back from down in South Carolina for their spring break trip, and the news comes down, and they're just, like, stunned. It's, it's like almost this surreal moment for them. And that's, I think, the seniors across the country, your team's going all these different places to play a game, and the buses are turning around to go back to campus because the season was just gone for seniors, I, I feel the, the worst for. And, I mean, if you're a senior, you, you went through this. At least for you, you knew you had a chance to play it out on the field. How do you think, like, these seniors are soaking this in? I, I have to imagine they're, they haven't probably been able to fully uh, soak it all in. And, and I'll just use my experience as somewhat of a barometer for this. I mean, my senior season ended by tearing my ACL on senior day on the turf in Newark. And granted, I got to play the, the whole year and we were going to go into the CAA tournament. And my hope was to play professionally that summer. That all went away. So I did. I do have a sense of some of the finality and when it can be taken away from you in that way. And, and this uh, is, is a whole lot worse in the sense that a lot of these teams, all these teams are in the heart of their season. And you mentioned Penn State, UVA. Yeah, I mean, all of these top 10, top 15 groups in a season that really felt in, in flux when it comes to who was going to be a national champion, uh, they all had those hopes and, and those all go away. And, and you know, I know we're going to make the shift here and, and discuss the future for some of these seniors. There is the reality, and, and, and I'm thankful that, that, it, that it is so that they've granted all these guys an extra year. How all that works in the math, whether it be the money and, and some of the restrictions academically and professionally that these guys have beyond uh, this season is going to have to be worked out. But that did, at least in my mind, Travis, provide a little bit of a of a Band-Aid or a, like some solace in the idea that, man, it's not completely uh, wiped away in a moment. Before we get to what the ramifications would be moving forward, because that, that's obviously where everybody's mind goes, because you just want to think about like lacrosse again and real games being played again. To me, I look back at this year and I, 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 I can't help but think of like what could have been, whether it's Syracuse trying to make a run back at championship weekend, being undefeated number one, Cornell and their incredible start being undefeated up there at top three, and, and then Michael Sowers and what he did. And then I think he can't forget about Penn State and the special group they had despite a couple of losses. Like what stands out to you of what could have been this year? Well, it really felt like, Travis, and, and you are living and breathing this thing on a day-to-day -day basis, and I, I do my best. But then, as I mentioned, kind of the way the schedule uh, plays out, this is where the, the gears really shift towards it. And it kind of worked hand-in-hand, -hand, in my opinion, with where the season was trending, where we were so 
kind of hands in the air, like what's going on in February. You've got results, whether it be Duke dropping one, uh, top tens always in flux, top fives in flux, number one's going down. And it felt like we were right on the precipice of kind of having some clarity. Okay, here's who we need to keep our eye on. Here's our our real contenders list. Here's the group that uh, might make a run, maybe a quarterfinal, a, a story that we'll think about. And the season goes away without us really knowing. And it makes for great discussions as we can try and take our way from the realities of what's going on in the world to have fun with the what if, what ifs. And, uh, and, and I think you laid it out well. I mean, the, the ones that I find myself thinking about when I think about what the season could have been actually was spending some time with a guy who played at Princeton when we were in college, uh, who's a good buddy. And in his mind immediately, obviously went to Sowers and thinking, man, did we just lose a chance to have a, a, a tour town out of Princeton this year? And then uh, Syracuse, the, the, them being back. And I, I really felt like th this was a group that was uh, poised to not just get back to championship weekend, but maybe win a title again. And, and I still really feel like Yale was uh, was was ready to make uh, another run. I, I just felt like they were such a uh, a behemoth to deal with. So we we look ahead to 2021, and it has the makings of what could be a very interesting and kind of up in the air type of year in terms of trying to figure out uh, guys that that may try to come back. You've got a freshman class that has a ton of talent, or a senior class in high school that's got a ton of talent who's going to be coming into the ranks as freshmen. It's probably it's way too early to tell like how many of these top guys are just guys in general as seniors who, who might decide to take an extra year and try to come back or who could transfer. But just in terms of like an educated guess, like do you have a feel for what this next year could be like in college lacrosse? I mean, this is more just gut in, in a sense of it, but largely based off of what we just discussed earlier about how the season ended, the finality of it that I would expect if it's if there's an opportunity, majority of these seniors are going to try and find a home, whether that's at their existing university or through the transfer portal or graduate school opportunities, find a place to play. Because I just think of, of especially where the sport's gone and, and the commitment that has been put in by these players to get to where they were and are, uh, that to have a chance to end it on their terms uh, and a new look terms now with, with an extra year given to them by the NCAA, I feel like the majority of them are going to take that opportunity. Now, some are going to, for obvious reasons, have things that they have to take care of professionally, whether that's they have a job lined up or whatever is standing in their way when it comes to life. But just spending some time around a lot of these college cross players, they're a different breed than they were when I played. And that was, I guess, uh, a little over 10 years ago where lacrosse was our focus, but we also had other things in mind. It feels a lot like when I deal with college basketball, top tier college football players. These are athletes that have dreamt about being in this spot their whole life. And if they have a chance to keep it going and keep that dream alive, I think a lot of them are going to do so. And I think uh, a lot of us would be very excited to see them uh, back in college uniforms, whatever uniform it is, uh, at least uh, for another season. Evan, we appreciate the time and ins insight. Stay safe, man. Yeah, absolutely. You too.